Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs, and holy crap, is this ever going to be an episode, because today is the return of the Le Mans. So like I just mentioned, today is the return of the Le Mans. If you're unfamiliar with this car, somehow, this is our 1968 Pontiac Le Mans that was abandoned and flooded ever since, I want to say the 80s if I remember right. Uh, we got a few videos out on this car, you guys can check them out in the playlist right here. Since this car was last on screen, there has been a few changes, I think. Um, <laughs> it has been such a wild year that I don't even remember where we were in this car. We were working on this and COVID hit, Mook and I bought a home. Uh, we started on a bunch of other projects. I kind of took a little break from YouTube. Uh, this car became a stalled project, turned into a shelf, which means it's a real project car. And then when we moved to the new shop this fall, it sat right here under the Wildcat, which is another stalled project, but that one's not my fault. So long story short, I have not touched this car in well over nine months and I have no idea <laughs> where we were. So our first step is gonna be dig this out and figure out what the hell we were working on. If I remember right, it has no carb. Check. Uh, we have some Corbeau racing seats for it. There's some other stuff laying in here that'll probably spark my memory as we go. It needs an exhaust, it needs a shifter, it needs a carburetor, and then a couple other small things. I think there was a coolant leak, now that I think of it. That's about all it should take to make this thing drive. Now, of course, on top of just bringing this project back from the dead, we're trying to do it on an extremely tight timeline. Right now, it is Tuesday night, and we're going to see if we can drive that to a media YouTuber influencer party thing that I barely even know what the hell's going on about in Des Moines Saturday. Supposedly 1320, that dude in blue. Uh, my buddy this week with cars and a couple other large names are going to be down there, so we need something sweet to roll all the way down in Des Moines in. And I think that's pretty much the coolest freaking thing we've ever made. So without further ado, let's pull this thing out, get the wrenches, and dive into it and see if we can finish the Pontiac Le Mans Gambler car. All right, let's get this sucker out of here. I like to say once and for all, but it's probably not the case. This guy can do it. This game's really easy, despite having no power steering, which is weird. And then your big block in front. There's our list of just things I can see from the outside and remember. I'm sure this will get way longer once we start digging into the interior. Let's do it. At this point, Angus and I started digging through the interior of the car, and boy, let me tell you, you think you remember what all's left on a project until you start digging through the pile of parts that never got installed. Within no time at all, our list had doubled in size, and I was really starting to question if this was even possible. For months, I had been telling people who were curious what was left on the Le Mans that I had about two or three weeks of fab work before I could finally drive the car around. The only thing outweighing our doubts at this point was the two cases of rippets on the shelf, so we wished our livers good luck, grabbed the wrenches, and set to work. Okay, coming back inside the Le Mans for the first time in months. Our floors are still made of floor. Uh, there's some wiring for a Note 2 sensor. Um, all the electrical switches and stuff are still sitting back here from rewiring the car. We have one of the Corbo seat mounts just chilling. Gotta figure out how to how to make that work. What do we want to dive into first? Maybe seats and a shifter? Yeah, those seem kind of important. You know? We do seats and a shifter and throw a carburetor on this. We could drive it on the yard, which will be that nice false sense of uh, accomplishment that we could probably really use at that point. True. All right. Get some holes going here for these seats. The time for precise measurements was months ago. Now it's time for uh, sharpie marks and stepper bits. Alright, so while I'm working on the seats and shifter position, Angus is up front popping our upper ball joints out because we had some serious uh, camber issues. And Kuwe One's suggestion for a solution was longer upper ball joints. Um, thankfully, they kind of know what they're doing when it comes to lifting A bodies because a lot of people build donks out of these, so they have some experience <laughs> with, with, this, with this setup. 
I have a B&M shifter I got off Facebook Marketplace sometime in the last year that I'm going to find the appropriate position for on what's left of that center console. And we'll go from there. This video is kind of going to be slammed together, much like this car is. So we'll be back when some progress is made. Time has passed. Angus has the longer, wow, those are way longer, aren't they? They are, they are significantly longer. I can already see in the face of the wheel hub that That's... the camber is going to be much improved. Here is the old versus the new ball joint length. Did you notice how uh, how easy it was to move those QA1 Ultimate ball joints? Yeah, they are very easy to move. In it's fact, like I was almost worried about it. Yeah, that's how they're supposed to be. They're just like butter. All right, sir, drop that thing. Let's see our camber. Oh. Granted, we need to roll it back and forth a little bit to settle the wheels because the rubber's flexing, but it's damn near the other way now. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta talk to Steve. I can't remember if we got the really long ones or just the kind of long ones. It made a huge difference, that's for sure. We can shim it in more. We can't shim out more. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, you're probably gonna touch over here on the frame. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that needs trimmed. That's all stuff we'll deal with when we deal with that stuff. All right, driver's brackets bolted down. Let's see how these fit. These are the ever so expensive Corbo XRS Baja seats, if I remember right. I don't know, it's been a year. Um, these suckers recline. They are really nice and wide. They're full leather, so they'll wipe down really nice. They've got slots for our harnesses later. And they go on their awesome adjusting track that we can slide back and forth. These things are beyond comfortable, which is exactly what I wanted if I'm going to be sitting in a nice, shaky, bumpy car for thousands of miles on a power tour. So, seats are a big part of a car. Let's go ahead and temporarily bolt this down and see how they sit. You're in the Le Mans? Le Mans. How's this sit, Moot? Pretty good. Comfortable? Yes, I feel very small, but yes. <laughs> it's a lot of cars suddenly. Are you excited, man? This, yes, I'm excited to drive this car. Me too. It's been like three years. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah? Three and a half. It? Well, let's get the seat bracket for the passengers. No, you get to sit on the floor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Do I? Yeah, that's the law. Alrighty, we're joining Angus under the rear of the car by the quick performance rear end and QA1 suspension because of this little bracket right here. That guy is a quick performance bracket that is meant for the QA1 shocks to mount to, but he is incorrect and he's single shear, by which I mean there's one bolt and I don't like that. So we're actually gonna adapt the QA1 brackets back on, just like on this side, and that will get two bolt points for our shocks to mount from. It's supposed to be three, but this, this is a little different than an OEM style. And then it brings the shock body away from the axle, which is way safer, and up another like three quarters of an inch, which will help with our ride height so we don't have to compress the spring a whole bunch more since we're already halfway through our travel and we need to go a little higher in the rear. Good shit there, sir. Sure is. We're missing two pieces of hardware, but I'll just take a brisk walk up the street and get them at the uh, hardware store. We'll pop this one off still, bolt this on, connect our shocks, drop her on the ground, and see where she sits. Hell yeah. Yep. I'm almost wondering if it might be too high. Or is there such a thing on this car? Nah. Nah. You ever been too high? I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> Our passenger seat mount is all bolted in and shimmed up with washers, as one would expect for a build such as this. Uh, I did make sure they were level with the digital level, so that's good. And they do shake the car when you shake them. Those are definitely stronger than any factory mounts. And before anyone says anything, I'm just going through the sheet metal. They are doubled up on the supports where possible from the seats. So uh, I'd say that's actually twice as strong as any factory seat mount. Or at least it was when all the metal was still there. Now it's probably just equally as strong. Angus is gonna go through the nightmare of reinstalling the rear window. Uh, I wish you luck, sir. I'll need it. I'm gonna go ahead and start on figuring out a way to get our shifter mounted and get it to cooperate with the transmission. I think it's gonna be an adventure to say the least. Not as adventurous as that window though. That, oh boy, I've been dreading that. So glad I'm not doing it. Well, 
the glass is physically in the quarter panel now. Uh, now I just gotta make sure everything's adjusted correctly within the mechanism, lube it all up, and double check that it doesn't shatter itself when you roll down the window. Nightmare? Uh, it's not a nightmare, it's just not a good dream. It's probably better that there's those holes there now. Yeah, but... this this made it a little easier. This makes it a little easier. Although I haven't used either, but now I can see through them. That's true. You remember those holes are there because I pounded out the smashed quarter panel from when this thing was T-boned after it sat down by a river for a number of years and got flooded out a few times. Meanwhile, I'm doing some uh, some knuckle measurements. At somewhere in there, I got about a two knuckle clearance to land some bolts to make a mount for our shifter. So I'm gonna go drill some holes and see how that turns out. Stepper bits and sharpie marks. Got an engineering degree for this. There we go. Our shifter bracket is all made up and ready to go. Actually kind of proud of that. Turned out way better than I had anticipated for using a sharpie and a step bit. Angus has our window done, it looks like. Does she work? It does. It kind of goes up, but man, I tell you what, it goes down like a ship with a big ass hole in it. What? <laughs> you know, like the Titanic. Went down fast. Oh, so it goes down real nice. It goes down real nice, but it goes up just about as well as the Titanic has. So yeah, it goes down, stays down. Yep. <laughs> Let's hold the ceremony here. Time to cross see. something off the list. Exhaust, no shifter, no seats. Kinda. Kinda? Window. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I hear window. You're working on shifter. I could throw a carb on it. We're ahead of schedule from what I thought. Yeah, we're kind of chopping through these things. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. So the good pub feed is probably next. Very important, I'll put a little star next to it. As you can tell, this is kind of just a run through, not showing a lot of stuff on camera episode. I'm sorry about that. It's just to recap the fact that there's stuff getting done on this, and then we're gonna emphasize more on driving it around and working kinks out of it in the end. Uh, this is just us running drills and wrenches. It's not that entertaining, if you ask me. The good stuff comes later when we turn dirt. Hey, Angus, the good pub feed just showed up. Yay! The what? <laughs> Did you guys eat these with or without the skin? <laughs> I take it you're a without guy. Yeah, I'm without the skin. That's a napkin. <laughs> oh. Okay, Mr. Angus. That's me. Our next step is rip this intake off. Um, this Wrong. engine ran great when we first got it. As you saw in the first Gambler build video, I changed this, by which I mean got rid of that big EGR thing. Ever since then, it's just never ran right. So I think this intake is causing us some vacuum issues. Uh, and I have an aftermarket four barrel that does not have these big logs of sadness right here. That's an aluminum four barrel. So nice. we're gonna get rid of this and put that aluminum on. While Angus starts turning that apart, I'm gonna go down to Ace Hardware, get some hardware for this bad boy. Dude, at this rate, we might have a car that we can drive around the yard here this evening. You're so hopeful, and it gives me hope, but not a lot. <laughs> this is so scary. So it's released. It's just that much weight. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're pushing down on it, my hands under it. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, damn it! Come here, you! Yep, so RGB. Sweet baby hastens. <sighs> that might be the heaviest intake I've ever picked up in my life. Do you need me to catch it from you? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ! So this has one of those uh, pans under the, yeah, the wind intake tree. that always cuts my fingers off. Cut your and finger. it cut my finger off and I'm bleeding all over. Great. Like the wind is straight, gasket's a neat idea that where it will uh, not, you know, 
let oil hit the bottom of your intake and get it warm. But I swear to God, it is the biggest pain in the ass to install and you'll always cut your fingers open. All right, now that the intake's off, I guess I'll get to scraping, get all the old gasket off and get the new one ready. Let's we'll just keep plugging away. Like how we're gonna do this and then come back in like a month when I can get a camshaft in time and pull the timing cover off because it leaks and then put a cam in and it's like half done right now. But we're just gonna undo everything we're about to do for science, for science. In other news, I have our shifter pretty much bolted in. I need to tighten down these three bolts here. I've got three that go through this piece of channeled metal right there, so they're double wall. And then four little button head bolts to hold the shifter to the plate. All in all, it turned out actually really well. I'm impressed. So I'll tighten that down and then move on to the next step, which is going to be figuring out how the hell I get the cable to work. All right, so I was in such a hurry that I forgot to film, but I've got our new aluminum intake on this 455 Olds Buick, whatever the hell it is. It's in there so that the uh, RTV can start setting. What brand is this? It's, don't know, patent pending. Boston? Yeah, P-O-S-T-O-N, Boston. Thanks, you call it an Olds. <laughs> I'm proud of you. So, I think... I got this intake from Marketplace, and I thought it was an Elrock intake. I don't know where it came from. I've never even heard of Post and Enterprises. Thank you for purchasing the new S-Divider intake manifold. Its unique design has shown to improve overall performance without sacrificing fuel economy. Bolt to 25 foot-pounds in several step increments. That makes sense since the original was a um, iron intake. So we're gonna start at 10 foot-pounds, ensuring to follow a spiral pattern all the way around. You're doing great, kiddo. All right, little update. We've got the intake completely torqued down. Uh, we're currently putting all of the fittings in to stop all the massive vacuum leaks that would be there. We'll go ahead and finish this up and then put a carb on there. And we'll be ready to light this thing off. All right, so most of our interior fab work in here is done for now. So there's still gonna be a roll bar someday. But for this trip, it's good to go, which means we're ready to put some seats in which means it's going to be a good old time. Oh God, we got to go in over you. Eh. Eh. <laughs> your face. We can take cry off the list. <laughs> Why am I putting $1,000 seats in an $800 car? Because it's the internet. <laughs> I just got all four bolts in this passenger seat. I'm going to try her on for size because it's break time. Oh man, this is all the way back and I got miles of leg room. Does this she recline nice. all the way to sleep in when we break down the side of the road? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that's nice. That's... Damn. Wow. <laughs> and that's why we paid a thousand dollars for seats. In a poop ass car. Oh yeah, this is really nice. Luke, you wanna come give it a try? He needs to get heck out. Luke I'll has requested you get heck out. I worked hard on this seat. Sure, I'll get the heck out. <laughs> I have room to wiggle my feet. And I have really yummy food. <laughs> oh. All right, good night. Oh, I forgot to tell my viewers that if my video gets a million views, I get to shave your head. What? That goes for this video, too. <laughs> You're gonna look like a toe. <laughs> All right, so our intake's on there. We got all of our Teflon and everything in the ports plugged up, ready to go. Did some quick math, walked over to the shelf of carburetors, found one that's good to go. This is a Holly Street Avenger 670. This should be everything we need for this engine. We're turning 462 cubic inches, looking to spin maybe 5,500 RPM. So this should be more than enough CFM. Basically, you can overcarb an engine really easy. I'm not gonna get into it today because we don't have a lot of time to get into it today. So, without further ado, thank you, Holly, for sending me this months ago. And <laughs> we never used it. Look at that beautiful bastard. Set this aside because it's gonna have all of our linkages and whatnot. Flip her over right away, verify our initial settings. Turn your choke off. I see this a lot. It's probably a good time to point this out. People are always asking, how to set their transfer slots when they can't get them any further closed than this right here. 
They're like, my throttle's all the way off, and my transfer slots are way beyond the square. This is what you gotta do. See this right here? This is your choke hold. Press that, choke comes open. Now, you can probably set your transfer slots. This sucker comes with the quick change secondary spring, so we're gonna go ahead and take that off and put a black spring in there to slow our secondary rate. Verify our transfer slots are set to a square. They are indeed. Make sure all of our uh, mixture screws on the side are synchronized and set to about a turn and a half, turn and three quarters out. And then go ahead and get our quadrajet to square bore adapter on the intake, get some gaskets in there, and bolt this all down. Goodbye, heck off. <laughs> Actually, I will mention one more thing. Our buddy Steve from this week with cars is here trying to help us get this car wrapped up before the deadline. So, big thanks to him. Hopefully we get some good progress on here tonight. Beautiful. Public service announcement for all of you out there. One thing to keep in mind while watching these videos is, we have merch. That's right, there's Junkyard Digs merch sitting back in that corner. There's also Junkyard Merc Mooch, Junkyard Merc Mooch, Junkyard Mook merch as well as a limited supply of Thunderhead 289 shirts. So go to www.junkyarddigs.com to get your own. This is literally all I wear under this coverall. Now back to the show. All right, oil's all drained. It's time to put the new stuff in. It's gonna be a weird hodgepodge because it's all we got laying around. Now it's time for me to put oil all over these headers. All right, and the last piece I believe that we need to add to this engine is an air cleaner. It'll probably come off before this thing hits the road for good, but just so we know where it's at and that it fits. Yeah, that's nice. Cool. Okay. Oh man, this thing got longer. All right, so PC, PVC is done. PCV, PVC, same thing. Thermostat housing, done. Carb, already done. Uh, vacuum advance, yep, sure is. Exhaust, no. Shifter, eh. Uh, coolant leak, sure it's fine. Bleed brakes, not yet. Fluids, mmm, oil's done. Fan, no. Wang, no but in yellow. Tire clearance, I'm sure that's fine, but we won't cross it off. Trunk latch, heck it. Hood pins, not yet. Well, we're whittling away. It feels like we've got the same amount of things to do, just different now. What day is it? It's Thursday, right? It's Thursday, it's fine. Okay, it's now like Thursday afternoon. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's going great. I took some time and wired up the fuel gauge and the reverse lights and then threw the key on and <laughs> neither of them worked properly. The fuel gauge went full and just held there. So either there's a wiring issue or it's uh, owned backwards and totally out of whack. And the uh, reverse lights just stay on all the time unless it's in reverse, they turn off. So what's happening there is it has a normally open switch on the shifter mechanism and I need a normally closed micro switch. The big happening here though is that I figured out how to hook our transmission up. I was finally able to hop on Google and throw the right set of words in to find the B and M shifter kit that's for a uh, TH400. And I, I found it and of course it's a couple special brackets and about 30 bucks and about five days from getting here. So I was just poking around the internet like, is there some weird chance someone has one? O'Reilly's and Ames had an aftermarket B&M shifter bracket kit. Two of them in Des Moines, and they had one to us in an hour and a half. Done. So that is freaking incredible. I'm going to throw this on, tune our uh, shifting positions into place, and then we're going to drive this thing around the yard. Let's get it done. Please hold while I wait for water. By the way, don't worry. This is literally soft water off of the city water. This is not hard water, so don't, don't freak out. Mook, don't panic. Ah! Well, so much for that. All right, update time. We have our throttle hooked up. Our carburetor's fully installed, ready to go. You hit the pedal and this little doodad moves and this little doodad brings it back. We've changed this over to a black spring on the secondaries. We've got all our initial settings set. We'll have to set our timing. We still need to find a fan. We've got everything buttoned up in here besides those two little electrical gremlins. And down yonder, we have our shift brackets installed. Reverse. Neutral. Drive. Second. First. 
just kidding, this is first. We need to throw uh, a few more lug nuts on this thing and make sure everything's tight. And then I think we put gas in and see if this thing drives around the yard for the first time in the three years that I've owned it or whatever it's been. Are you going for a ride move? Wait, right now? In like 10, 15 minutes, yeah. We need to put lug nuts on and fill it with gas. And Let's take a nap real quick. Angus, no! Now is not the time! So nice. I'm you Don't heck me up. No, please. <laughs> Hi. All right, let's button this up and take it for its first 30 foot test drive. Woo! Yeah, this is the great thing about the uh, trunk fills. All right, I'm gonna watch for leaks. Okay, cool. Can't believe we're actually doing this. Go ahead. Bless you. Trying to run it on this until we can get some fuel up to here. Uh, we need to pull fuel to the whole system. So it's going to take a lot of cranking or a little running. Go ahead. Go ahead. Still no fuel. Come on, you hacker. Go ahead. So we've decided our mechanical fuel pump is bad and we are losing light quick. So we have rigged up an external fuel can here. We're gonna go ahead and fill the pump, set the ignition timing, and then take this thing out the door. All right, light it off, sir. So we just sprung a fuel leak right before we were ready to head out the door. I knew I should have replaced this hard line, but it was too cheap at the time. So I'm paying the consequences now. We're gonna see if we can cut it, section in a new foot of soft line here, and still try to drive this thing around tonight. I'm only nine tenths covered in gasoline, but we got a two foot section of soft line in place that should help hold everything together here. Let's try this again.
Oh, I'm sure that'll all self-clearance. this thing has balls dude we've got some definite clearancing to do up front maybe in the rear i hear a lot of times we hit bumps it goes <laughs> it's trying to rip anything attached to it off so we'll need to address that but there it is it runs let's put it back in the shop and finish this thing up for saturday wake up neighbors <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another day. I worked on the Le Mans here. It's day three. Uh, today's the day I hopefully get my hair cut finally for the first time in four months. But besides that, uh, we have been working this morning on getting an exhaust on this car. We've got all the groundwork done. Uh, we basically took the old single collector, cut it in two for the flanges, and we put some 18 inch glass packs on there. And we're going to do a 22 inch pipe, a 45, and a side exit right here with a tip that we're going to make ourselves. By tip I mean a pipe cut at an angle. And then we should have ourselves an exhaust system. So we're going to go ahead and get this exhaust buttoned up and bring you guys along for the ride and just keep moving forward to get this car done on time. This is likely not our permanent exhaust solution so we're just slapping this together now. Someday I will put headers on this motor, uh, give it what it deserves and then have a exhaust actually made for this. So it's not just me bolting things together. All right, let's get it done. All right, we got the side bolted up. O2 sensor bung is welded in. I got a haircut, finally. Uh, a little tip about these glass packs, they sound awesome, they're pretty cheap, and they're uh, bi-directional, which means you go this way, and you get a louder noise. You go this way, and you get a quieter noise. Because as you can see, those cups right there actually catch the air flowing towards them. You guys are essentially the engine right now and I am the tailpipe. But we go this way and you'll notice it's a bit quieter because now the sound waves from my voice are being caught by the glass pack. So I'm gonna make sure to put those on the quiet way because 462 cubic inches of Buick Big Block is not a um, calm pony, if you will. Right finish this sucker up. All right, so our exhaust system is done. I need to plug in the O2 sensor yet, but for now, let's fire this up and see how it sounds. We're running the 18 inch glass packs with some side dumps. So it's probably gonna be a little loud, but we'll see. As long as you can get the sound out from under the car, it'll keep it from being droning and we should be okay. sensor uh, and then that is like done done and then we can start working on a lot of alignment up front clearance. yeah entire clearance and now I think I'll play you the song of my people <laughs> okay the midnight oil is being thoroughly burned running like diesels over here Angus has been working on our front end alignment he is just Stacking every daggum spacer we could get our grubby little hands on into <laughs> into this poor car to try to get this alignment set up right. Um, if we have time tomorrow, we're gonna throw our quick trick alignment kit, portable alignment kit on. Uh, if you have interest in this, you can go to their website. This is basically a portable alignment kit, and there's a really nice piece of equipment here that you throw some. Uh, magnets on with the hardware that came with it and it clips to the outside of the rim Then you use tape measures and digital levels to do all your caster camber toe So does that mean you need to have steel wheels to use this alignment kit? There's multiple versions of these. Okay, we perfect. have the steel wheel one. There's others that like clip in and other stuff they've, they've got it all figured out. Excellent. So yeah, if you want one for yourself head to quicktrickalignment.com Use the code QTJYD for 20% off 
we're not getting paid from that code or anything it is just absolutely a code for you guys to go get 20 percent off this pretty nifty tool to have around the shop and support a small family owned business all right our wheels are looking good enough since we have a brand new rear axle we have to take it easy on this car and get about five heat cycles at varying speeds through that rear axle before we can really either take it on a long drive or drive it like we're 16 years old we are going to hop in this take a little slow cruise around town because it's like 10 30 i don't know Sleep. hopefully not get pulled over and see what rubs and what might make noise that we haven't seen yet let's do it you got my bungee cord on the door handle let's give this a go i thought i'd be able to reach this oh actually Don't put your fingers under the handle. <laughs> Noted. Hang on. Yeah, so let's just close my door. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Done. Safety. Oh. What Sit if, up. We gotta go. We gotta what, go. What if we just slept instead? I'm not I'm not sleeping in this car with you. How do we make such a rusty pile of shit so comfortable? No idea. I mean, set a little advance here, not the life. I like how we're doing like, I don't know, two right now? Yeah. The speedometer says 12. Oh! Ooh! It pulled the car each way when it did it. Yikes. Ow. so lightly touched the gas and it blew the tires loose like I wasn't even trying to do that no I know it didn't even suck me back in my seat before it no it just busted them loose it was the tires right it wasn't the rear end flying off uh well we're still moving all right let's head back to the shop see where our rubber meets our not, everything not the road but the car yeah and then take care of that morning Mook this is it. This is the last day. We got a bit of a late start this morning because some stuff we had to do, but it is 1041 and the party is tonight at 5 p.m. Supposedly with that dude in blue in 1320 and I, I, I don't really know what's going on. We've just been invited like I said, so uh, yeah, let's see if we can get this car done. We need a hood. We need to do a bunch of clearance into these tires. We drove around last night and as you can see, she be hitting. I'm gonna try to smash that out of the way, slash cut that out of the way, cut all this out, probably roll this trim over, blah, blah, blah. Angus is gonna dig into that when he gets here. I'm gonna get the hood on. I'm gonna set the camera down and get to work because we have like seven hours to be there. Six, actually, shit. By the time Angus finished the wheel clearance and I did some adjustments in the rear end, we had about three hours left until we needed to be wheels up. After one final test drive to make sure the front end cleared, we went all hands on deck to install the hood, hood pins, rear wing and wash the dust off before hitting the road. All right, we're bucking it over to Ames. We're gonna go home, change clothes. Should be the last heat cycle for that axle. Then we'll head down to Steam shop, meet up with him, check all our fluids, and then hit the road and head south. I'll see you at Steve's. All right, so we made it to Steve's. This car actually ran perfectly smooth down the highway. Alignment seems to be good. It's running nice and riding good. He's got, I believe that was a Sunbeam Tiger. Yep. The 66 Sunbeam Tiger. I'm gonna follow him down in Des Moines. Let's see if this whole thing will make it. About 70 mile an hour. Running a cool 180. We gotta keep the wind speed up or it does get a little warm since there's no shroud. 40 PSI, rock solid pressure. Looking at 2700 RPM highway speeds. Interstate speeds. It's honestly not shaking or anything. It's pretty damn smooth. We did hella good, Moop. Let's go to a party.
right, well, they weren't kidding when they said come down and have a party. So, uh, that's that. I'm going to go home and order a new set of rear tires. We'll see you guys next week right here on Junkyard Digs for who knows what adventure. Uh, make sure you subscribe to everyone. Junkyard Mook, Thunderhead 289, Dylan McCool, Classic Mustang 429, The Boss Garage, Vice Grip Garage, Cars and Cameras, Golden Rush and Bus. And this week with cars. And if you have tuner stuff to do, we'll see you down here at OTL off the line in Des Moines. Peace. Bye. So we're driving home from the event. Oil pressure's a bit low. Something's making fun little knocking noises in the motor. I think we got a little bit of rod knock going on. So we'll get this back to the shop, rip the motor out, go through it, make sure she's good to go for power tour. And we'll be back. See you guys next week. Peace.